Hello everybody, I want to welcome you to Yakima Covenant Church. It's Thomas here and I'm so thankful that you could join us and be part of this new year of new sermons and new opportunities to be in community together and a new series. So this is just a wonderful time to start something new. Before we get into our worship time, there are a few announcements uh, that I want to make note of and I'm going to pass those things on to those people and then we will join together in worship and song. Thanks so much and we'll see you soon. Enjoy the service. Good morning and Happy New Year. I'm Lynette Hammerstrom, one of your deacons. One of our ministries is the Care and Share Fund, which helps those in our congregation who are dealing with an unplanned financial burden they are unable to meet. If you or someone you know is experiencing such a hardship, contact me or Denise in the office and we will assist you in the application process. My contact information is in the bulletin. All information and applications are completely confidential. This ministry is supported by donations, and if you would like to contribute to this fund, you can make a note in the memo of your check or mark the box on the donation envelopes in the pews for the Care and Share Fund. Your assistance in this ministry will be a real blessing to someone in need. Thank you. Thank you all again for your faithful support of the ministry and missions of Yakima Covenant Church and know you are very appreciated. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst on my sight Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior 
happy and blessed Watching and waiting Looking above Filled with His goodness Lost in His love This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior all the day long this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Our God, our Savior, we thank you. May that beautiful hymn be true in our hearts and lives. To praise you with each breath. Keep us mindful. Lord, open our hearts today to hear from your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. save themselves their own soul could heal our shame was deeper than the sea your grace is deeper still who oh lord could save themselves their own soul their shame was deeper than the sea your grace is deeper still and you alone can rescue you alone can save you alone can lift us from the grave you came down to find us, let us out of death. You alone belongs the highest praise. You, O oh Lord, have made a way, the great divide you heal. For when our hearts were far away, your love went further still. Yes, your love goes further still. And you alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from the grave. You came down to find us, let us out of death. You alone belongs the highest praise. To you alone belongs the highest praise. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. Lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of a life. Lord, we lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes, you're the giver of life. And you alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from the grave. You came down to find us, let us out of death. To you alone belongs the highest praise. To you alone belongs the highest praise, Lord. To you alone belongs the highest praise.
When Pastor Dean asked if I would be willing to share my testimony of when I was saved and how I came to attend this church, I wasn't sure. But the more I thought about it, I believe God likes it when we share our stories with each other because then we know we're not an, alone on this life's journey. Others struggle with the same life challenges that we do. I've attended church since I was about four years old and I always believed in what I learned. Nothing big or dr dramatic, just a procession of growing up in the church. It wasn't until I was about 12 years old that I first went to the altar and prayed for the Lord to enter my heart. I've always known that I wanted to be a Christian and follow the Lord, but there have been several times throughout my life that I wandered away, not attending church like I should, praying like I should, living my life like I should. But during all of these times, he never left me. I was the one who stepped away. It was after my divorce and I moved back to Selah to be closer to my family, I knew I wanted to make a real commitment to God, that I would serve him like I knew I should. So that's what I did. I became very active in my church that I was raised in, serving in many areas. Women's ministries and music became my main focus. I sang in choir and I was on the worship team. I planned ladies' luncheons and teas, craft nights, bazaars, attended Bible studies whenever I could. And then in 2001, God gave me a challenge to face that I didn't know if I could or would overcome. I was diagnosed with advanced stage four of kidney cancer. Mark and I had just been married a little over a year, and I didn't want to start our marriage out this way. We went to Seattle to the University of Washington Medical Center where they removed one of my kidneys and I learned that some of that tumor had broken off and went into my pulmonary arteries. I had to do an infusion that most people cannot even do because it is so hard. My pastor asked if he could anoint me with oil and pray for healing, but I didn't feel worthy of that. So I asked him if he would anoint me and pray that I would just be able to tolerate the infusion treatments. The doctors felt like it would give me maybe another five years to live. But God answered that prayer. Praise God. He healed me completely and totally. And 20 years, here I am. He has given me many opportunities to speak at luncheon, sharing my story about what God has done in my life. I also have volunteered at North Star Lodge Cancer Center for 10 years, sharing my story and the love of the Lord whenever I could with patients who were receiving treatment. Then God gave Mark and I another challenge, taking our granddaughter Caitlin into our life and our home to raise when her mother wasn't able to. Three years after she came to live with us, her mother had another little girl, Piper, and when she was one, she also came to live with us. Wow, I said, God, I'm too old to raise kids again. But he said, this is what I want you to do, and I will give you the strength. And then along came the time to find preschool, and we were introduced to Wonderland, and what a wonderful place. The church I had grown up in had a difficult time after COVID. Some people never returned, we didn't have a piano player for music, and there was no kids' programs. And we knew that we wanted Piper to be in church and learn about the Lord. After much prayer, we finally made the decision to visit Yakima Covenant. And from the first time we came, and I heard Josh playing and leading the worship music, and then I heard Pastor Dean preach, I knew I had found a church that I wanted to be a part of and they were even starting a kids program. I may not be doing much with women's ministries here, and I never thought I'd be helping with the kids programs again at my age, but here I am, singing with them, helping with the summer swim days, VBS, and preparing their treats. And all of this is okay, because I believe I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do, and I believe I'm doing at the church he wants me to be at. 
Once upon a time in a small village in Somalia, people raised lions as guardians. One day a lion with red eyes was born named Badun. Badun was banished from the pride for strange eyes and grew up alone admiring the brave lions of his pride from afar. One day a village was attacked by a dragon. Badun watched his pride lose a battle, but uh, he was afraid to join in. And finally, after a multitude of days of dragon's attacks, he could not stand it to see the suffering that was happening. So he, he joined the fight, and Badun was the only lion that could defeat the dragon. And once he did, his pride accepted him back and realized they never should have treated him differently. Once upon a time, it's uh, once upon a time, it's a phrase that all over the world we tell st uh, stories to our children and passing them down generation to generation. A lot of times with the moral of story, the story of Badun is a help Somali children accept people who are even different than, say, themselves in some way. What's your favorite childhood story? Perhaps it's Cinderella, the story of a poor, neglected girl uh, with a servant heart who unexpectedly was chosen to become a princess. Or is it uh, Robin Hood and Merry Men who steal from the rich and give to the poor? Of course, the greatest story of all is the true story, the one we all find ourselves in, a story of God's salvation of the world through Jesus, the story of creation, the fall, redemption, and restoration. This is a story that we want to invite others into. Today, we're talking about how we can bless others through sharing our story and the story of Jesus with those around us. We're in a series called Catching Fish, about catching fish, and it includes telling the story of Jesus. In, the story, in this series, uh, what it means to be living out our mission of going fishing, five skills that make us better anglers, five ways we can bless our world. The word bless is an acronym, and it stands for we begin with prayer. We learn the skill of listening with the care and eating together and S was serving with love. And then finally, the other S word is what it means to share the story of how Jesus is transforming our lives and the world. As we discussed previously, it's not only uh, fish others, but it's much more than that, blessing across boundaries of differences. Our goal in this blessing others is to join the Holy Spirit and join people to Jesus. Today we're looking at the story in Acts where Paul tells the story of Jesus to a, a crowd of Greek philosophers. Let's read together now or listen to the story of Acts 17, 16 through 34. To the god Zeus. Goddess Athena, to the unknown God, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I walk through the city and look carefully at the objects of worship, I find among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. But noble men, the God who made this world does not live in shrines made by human hands as though he needed anything from us. He himself gives to all mortals life and breath. We ought not to think of God as an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. God overlooks the times of human ignorance. But now, as man gains knowledge, God commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged by a man whom he has appointed and who raised himself from the dead. Raised himself from the dead? And ascended into heaven where he waits for the day to come when we will all be judged for our belief in him. Jesus of Nazareth. Told me about Jesus. You say he raised himself from the dead. Yes. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for the example of your servant Paul, who 
paid such careful attention to communicate effectively with various groups of people that he came in contact with. Help us to learn what it means to sharing your story across boundaries that divide. Uh, learn from Paul. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Like good anglers, they think about all aspects of catching fish, right line, bait, etc. Well, Paul is an example of a master evangelist who takes a posture of a cultural learner. He continually wanting to learn to, so he could bless the people he most people that possible with the gospel. He writes in the Corinthians, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. 1 Corinthians 9. The former covenant church planting leader who I loved and had the opportunity to interact with, Dave Olson, who says, we may not all be gifted evangelists, but we all need to do the work of evangelism. Let us learn today how to be effective from the way Paul shared this God's story with the people of Athens. This final skill is necessary to make the mission whole, this mission of going fishing. When children move from beyond gesturing to start using words, we recognize them as growing in maturity. Well, likewise, it's a sign of our own maturity in Christ when we begin using words of sharing his story, our story with others. The Apostle Paul was distressed when he sees the city of Athens full of idols. And although he hadn't originally planned to spend a lot of time there, he couldn't help but share the story of Jesus. We know through the other parts of Acts, when Paul begins in the synagogue, when he's talking with Jews and speak, he speaks in Aramaic and appeals to Jews from based on the history of Israel and the prophetic texts that point to Jesus. But in this setting, where he's in the marketplace, uh, sharing about the good news of Jesus and the resurrection, Epicurean, Stoic philosophers, he takes a different approach. In the, in the city of Socrates, Paul evangelized with the method of Socrates, uh, being able to make proclamation. And then there was a time for discussion. He caused enough stir that they dragged him to the Areopagus, a, a hill where the administrative body sat, a chief court of in Athens, and there he shares a story again. How often do you share about Jesus, not with those who don't yet know of the good news? If not often, can you start by just learning to articulate the hope that we have? What's your story? How has Jesus changed your life, and what's the hope you have? Listen to Gina tell her story. Hi, my name is Gina Tukes, and uh, Pastor Dean has asked me to share how I came to my faith. And um, to start out, I was baptized, had my first communion and confirmation in the Catholic Church. And the older I got, I realized I didn't have the same ideology as Catholicism. So I left the Catholic Church and I seeked other churches, trying to see if I could find something that I kind of meshed with and felt good and welcomed in, and I just never found that the way the world is right now. It's kind of a scary place. I have children in the military that get deployed. Um, all that kind of stuff is just, I know that, I mean, I pray all the time, but it's just I needed to be someplace with other people as a family getting together and joining prayers. So, um, when COVID hit, I met Thomas at the YMCA and had my great niece in there with him and kind of started doing the YMCA stuff. And then he started here and we followed. And she was coming to the Sunday schools and then the Wednesday night things. And I just decided, let me give this church a try. And everyone's been so welcoming and it's just been a great experience for me. And I feel at home here. I was nervous at first because I didn't really know anybody. So I sat in the back, like I still do, but <laughs> it's just, you know, I kind of sit back and watched and people came to me. And that's one thing I've never experienced in a church before. People actually came to me, reached out to me, introduced themselves. And still every Sunday morning when I see people, they still say, good morning, Gina. And it's really great to have that feeling that people actually know me and wanted to meet me and got to know me. So it's a great feeling. 
As you think about how to craft a story, it's important to know the need to be holistic in the nature of the gospel. In the early church, they, they prayed, they performed miracles, they ate together, they looked after the poor. It's essential in the proclamation of the kingdom of God and the, by the power of the Holy Spirit to, by welcoming the stranger, caring for the sick and seeking justice for all the oppressed. That's why we're involved with Union Gospel Mission. I'm reminded of Camp Hope in Yakima and even Stacy in the paper this last week, how using shipping containers to care for the poor. See, the key in the global missional leaders and the Lusane movement make it important to note that it needs to be holistic in nature. They defined holistic nature of the mission as this. Integral mission is the proclamation, demonstration of the gospel. It's not simply the, that evangelism and social involvement are to be done alongside each other. Rather, an integral mission, our proclamation has social consequences as we call people to love and repentance in all areas of life. And our social involvement has evangelistic consequences as we bear witness to the transforming grace of Jesus Christ. If we ignore the world, we betray the Word of God, which sends us out to serve in the world. If we ignore the Word of God, we have nothing to bring to the world. In the 20th century, there was a very popular way of sharing the gospel using diagrams on napkins. I, I used it as well. And although that practice is not as common now, there's one napkin diagram that I think is worth looking up and finding out about. It's called The Big Story, created by evangelist James Chung. I like it because it captures a lot of the plot lines of this larger story in which we live and breathe. I think they have some helpful phrases that, that help us share the gospel, that, that we're designed for good, that we're damaged by evil, we're restored for something better, and we're sent out to together to heal. That's the biblical narrative. It follows creation, the fall, redemption, mission, restoration. Throughout the series, we've talked about blessing across boundaries of differences and boundaries that often serve to divide rather than bring us together. In this passage, in Acts 17.22, Paul starts to address the people who are meeting, he's meeting in the Areopagus, the way he shares the story is a master class in fishing and blessing across differences. First, we see that although he was greatly distressed by the idol worship, he addressed the idol worshipers with respect and honor, acknowledging their commitment to worship without denigrating them. Paul noticed an inscription to an unknown God, and Paul spoke in a language they understood and introduced them to the God of heaven and earth. Uh, Gia Fernando wrote the Acts NIV application commentary. He says, Paul agreed with what he could agree in those phase and used those elements as stepping stones of presenting the gospel. Though his substance was entirely biblical, Paul did not quote from scriptures as he did when he spoke to Jews, uh, God-fearers. In fact, he quoted from the writings of their own philosophers. We call such adapting contextualization. Paul preached to the Greek philosophers of the death and resurrection of Jesus in such a culturally effective way that we know that Dionysus, a member of the leading council, became a follower of Jesus, and as well as a, a woman named Damaris and a number of others. If we want to reach those who are different from us, need to take the time and the energy to enter their world so that we can speak of Jesus in a way that they will hear the gospel as good news. Are we ready to do that? I know some of you may be afraid if you immerse yourselves with the ways of unbelievers, you might delight, dilute your faith. But if we continue to soak ourselves in the scriptures each day, uh, to know our contextualization, we will, we will remain faithful to Jesus. See, it's better to share the story with others and learn as we go than to, to do nothing because we're afraid of doing it wrong. Jesus will help us. I remember at University of Christian Fellowship at the university campus, I took a philosophy class, and the challenging professor started out on day one with saying, how many of you believe in God? Really, raise your hand, and he would continue to use different tactics to shut people down. I, I walked away from that class 
Not knowing how I would respond in that class, I walked away thinking, God, I, I'm sorry I didn't raise my hand. And I took time to study and reflect on the philosophies and the way and approaches that he used to uh, discredit Christians. Uh, I took time and I went to, and hoping there would be another opportunity to share. And I remember one day, topic came up again. He goes, how many of you actually believe that there is a God? And I raised my hand. He goes, well, how, how do you know there is a God? I, if, how are you going to know? I said, well, you know, there is that atheist philosopher, and he knew that person. I said, the you know, atheist philosopher says, you know, we can't go up to God and find out, because if we could, then we would be God, and we're not God. It's like the birds of the air. They only can go so far. And he was in agreement with me as I shared so I said, those birds would become infinite if, if they could go beyond that point. But I said, what if God, who is infinite, became finite and lived amongst us? Now, he as a professor was good. He quickly was in control of the classroom and said, well, what's he going to do? Come down in a spaceship, and he changed the point of conversation. What I'm trying to share is, is that we need to understand where the person we're talking to with, uh, what context they come from, find ways to relate to them, and engage them in a conversation that leads for us to have an open door to talk about our faith in Christ. We serve a God that delights in building bridges that none exist, of making broken things whole. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes to bridges He wants us to build with whatever we find ourselves, where there's differences, race, ethnicity, culture, ability, gender, class. Friends, this is not some fantasy with our own eyes, we will see history culminate in a colorful celebration of this diversity uh, when we get to heaven. As we are building bridges, we can partner with Jesus, usher in the kingdom of God, experience a foretaste of our destiny in Christ. I didn't have much choice. Uh, until that day, the church's participation in God's mission continues in joyful urgency with fresh, exciting opportunities in every generation, including our own. We're called to be God's witnesses, active anglers, skills of sharing the story of the good news of Jesus Christ to those around us, including those who are very different from us. See, God has given us a mission field right here in Yakima, or God has given you a mission field right where you are. We can have the confidence that the same Holy Spirit that empowered the disciples at Pentecost are present here today to enable each of us to be effective witnesses of Jesus' saving love. Like Paul in the book of Acts here, in Acts 17, the Holy Spirit gives him wisdom. It gives him a cultural agility to contextualize the message to his hearers. We serve a God that delights in building bridges where there are none, of making broken things whole. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. 
every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. 